Hey guys, welcome back to my Animal Adventures YouTube channel and in this episode I want to talk about breeding mice and specifically there's really only two reasons that I know of to breed mice and that is breeding mice as pets or breeding mice as food for your reptiles. Alright, first I want to give you a brief history of my experience breeding mice. And it all started, I was watching a few YouTube videos and people were breeding snakes. And I was like, that is what I want to do. <laughs> I want to breed some snakes. And if you breed snakes, there's only one thing on the menu. And that is rodents. And <laughs> they only eat rodents. You know, if I could feed them hot dogs, I would. But unfortunately, they only eat either rats or mice. And actually, my first year breeding ball pythons, uh, I had the first experience where I found out I really need live mice as essential for new ball python hatchlings. The very first, uh, I would say, one to three meals at least need to be live mouse crawlers. And they will absolutely refuse anything else. I tried live rat pups, I tried uh, frozen thawed rats and mice, and they won't eat anything except live mouse crawlers. And that is what really got me set on I really need to breed some mice for my reptiles. So when I first got into snakes, I picked up a few juvenile ball pythons and a few king snakes, and I thought, I'm just going to dabble around in some mice and rats, and, and I had some glass aquariums, set them up, and I bought a few juvenile rats, and I actually went to, I can't remember, it was Petco or PetSmart, or one of the big chain pet stores, and I bought some fancy mice. <laughs> that was a mistake, let me tell you. So I started breeding those fancy mice and feeding them to my snakes and every now and then I'd pick out a mouse that was like white with black spots it looked like a little Dalmatian and that was really cool so I was like oh I gotta hold on to that one and then I had another one that I popped out and it was this, sh this really silvery gold uh, it, was, it was almost iridescent it was complete, completely gold and I was like oh I gotta hold on to that one and pretty soon after about a year I had this whole rack of all these mice that I wanted to keep <laughs> and I didn't want to feed any of my snakes that was a big problem and, and it almost became a, a conflict between trying to do it as pets versus trying to do it as feeders and then I decided at that point to actually unload all of my fancy mice because I didn't really want to uh, do it uh, on the pet side. I want to do it more as feeders and I actually moved into a feeder quality rodent and, and I found a pet store that actually bred and kept uh, and they actually were kind of like a wholesaler. They'd get in all these mice and then they'd resell them as as snake food and they were all white and I thought oh that's perfect for me because you don't get attached to your mice and you're not picking out your favorites they all look the same and it turns out they're a highly productive strain of mice and let me show you my setup over here I have this pretty awesome setup this is actually some caging by ARS and this is where I keep all my rats and mice over here these are all rats over here rats on the bottom and then I just have two levels of mice up here on the top. And these mice, <laughs> let me show you some of these mice. These are like an albino. I'm wondering if they're like lab quality mice because I just can't believe how many babies they'll have. One mouse will have like 16 babies. <laughs> I've never seen mice have so many babies. It's pretty incredible. And the fancy mice, it seemed like they only had six or seven. And these have almost, I'd say almost three times the babies. And they are just incredibly productive. Okay, so let's talk about the differences between mice and rats. And if you're used to breeding rats and you're thinking about getting into mice, they are completely different, let me tell you. So, for example, rats, you could take any rat from any tub, mix them together, and there'll be no aggression at all. Versus mice, mice are extremely aggressive, and they're, I would say they're, they're very extremely social to their inner social class of just the mice in that particular colony. So, if, for example, if you took mice from one colony or one tub, moved it to another tub and tried to mix it in with those mice, they would fight. And especially if you had more than one male, they would fight really aggressively to the point where they can actually draw blood, which is which is pretty crazy. And when I first started with my mice, I actually started, you know, trying to have a male tub and a female tub, similar to the rats. So, so I kind of get them to a certain point and then and then separate the males and females, put all the males in a separate male tub, and that definitely won't work with mice. 
and you can actually hear, if you have a male tub set up, you can actually hear them fighting and wrestling around day and night, and you look at those mice, and they are really in rough condition. You definitely only want to keep one male per tub. Okay, so another difference between mice and rats is that the mice smell worse. They, they have a stronger smell uh, to them than the, than the rats. They stink. <laughs> and it, specifically, it is only the male mice, so you can really control it. So for example, if I had a whole rack here full of all females, you wouldn't hardly even know that there's mice in there. And if you put one male mouse in this whole rack, it would smell worse than uh, the, the, both of these racks of rodents. And it's probably the one thing that really keeps me from expanding my mouse breeding operation is the smell of the male mice. And you can kind of keep it under control. What I do is I kind of limit it to just two or three males. And what I'll do instead of hopping the male through, because it seems like there's a lot of aggression if you do it that way, what I do is is I put one male with uh, like f I'd say five or six females. And once some of those females get pregnant, I'll move those females into separate tubs and kind of start a separate colony using those females and then one of their babies is a male and, and what I'll also try to do is try to retire the older males and then keep the younger males as replacement because I find the older males seems like they smell worse than the young ones. So I actually had one of my viewers leave a comment under one of my videos and they asked so how do I prevent cannibalism in mice? And I wrote back and said, that's a pretty complicated question, and, and I'd like to briefly cover it here. And I think really what the issue is, is that when the female has babies, they don't really understand what those babies are, and they see them as food instead of more mice. And I think they get a little confused. And I think what really helps cannibalism uh, is if you have more than one female. So for example, if you have one female who's had babies for the first time and you put her in a tub by herself, she doesn't really know. But if you have other females there, especially if you have more mature females that have babies and they're there nursing and growing up those babies, I think all the mice in that colony can really see what's going on and then they understand, oh, those are more mice instead of something to eat and they, they learn that way. And as a matter of fact, I used to have that problem early on. I had quite a few mice cannibalizing their litters and it seemed like uh, I was almost tempted to call them and, and, and feed them to my snakes and kind of start over with more mice. And I had some comments on some of the forums on the internet that said, just give them a chance, you know, two or three more litters. And sure enough, after two or three more attempts, they will actually have successful litters and they will stop the cannibalism. So here's another interesting thing that I found when I was moving from aquarium style enclosures over to these rack systems, is that when I had the aquariums, I would put a lot of crumpled up newspapers all through the aquarium and it would kind of give them a 3D environment and it was kind of my thinking that if, if I had more uh, space in there throughout the whole aquarium like in a 3D setup I could put two or even three times as many mice and it actually worked fairly well the only problem was is I saw a lot of aggression and it seemed like almost within that aquarium that they would set up almost their own little colonies in a corner to where you'd have some mice that would kind of gang up on the other ones. It was kind of interesting. And then when I moved over to these rack systems where there wasn't really the segregation and it was just all flat, everyone kind of on the same level in the same playing field, yeah, I had almost no aggression at all, which was pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. So another thing to keep in mind if you're raising mice is that they don't live very long. They only have a lifespan of about a year. And as a matter of fact, after about eight months, they're pretty much too old to breed. And they'll kind of trick you because the females, they'll get really thick and heavy. And they'll actually look pregnant. And you'll separate a female, an older female, into her own tub. And she'll just sit there for a long time looking pregnant. And she'll never give birth. It's because that's kind of the way they look towards the end of their life. And sometimes you can end up with tubs that are non-productive. And if you don't kind of keep track of the babies coming out of that tub, you can have tubs that are just taking up space with older females. So you really have to watch that. And another thing you really have to watch is that you don't wean the babies too early. And that was kind of one of my mistakes early on is I would, I would move the babies to a separate tub thinking that I'm going to start another colony and they, wouldn't, they would not either not thrive or not survive, unfortunately. And, and it seems like, especially compared to rats, the mice need a little bit more of a boost as far as 
uh, being a little bit more mature before you separate them away from the mom because I think they just need that mother's milk just a little bit longer just to reach that level of maturity before they're good enough to survive on their own. So I also like to keep the population density in each tub really low and remember if you have you know three or four females and they all have 16 babies that tub could fill up really fast. As a matter of fact I can go through my tubs and I'll just kind of show you how many mice I have in each tub. And some of these I'm pretty much starting new colonies so in this one I just have one mouse uh, this one, I have another one with babies, and, and remember, that one with babies, if she has 16 babies, that's going to be 16 mice in that tub when they grow up. And this one, I actually have um, one male, three females, and I actually had multiple females in here, and then when they got pregnant, I moved them over to my other tubs to kind of start the other new colonies. And I actually started this colony just recently with one female. This one has actually five mice and you can see that when they get pregnant they get really big and fat <laughs> they, they, they can have a ton of babies and typically what I do is I'll take that big fat ready to breed female and ready the female that's ready to have babies and I'll put them in a separate tub and that's what almost all these are so I'll have one tub with a bunch you know like this one has one male and three females and usually as soon as the, the females get pregnant I'll move one and sometimes two females over to a separate tub and I'll never mix females from one tub to another so for example I'd never take one of these females and put it in another tub because that could result in a lot of aggression and here's another one with just one female with some babies and here's another one this one just has three over here and this one actually looked like um, might have some older older mice in here so this is kind of what they look like when they get older they get kind of big and, and fat <laughs> and you can tell these are pretty much towards the end of their life you can see someone had one baby so these are pretty much ready to be retired they don't really produce at this age and at, at this point they really don't have much longer to live so so what I'll generally do is if I have some really old ones I'll just flip the the little um, the mouse sign upside down that I need to replace those in that tub probably feed them off to one of my snakes and then replace them with some of these others that are it's it's, it's always a juggling act trying to trying to get the, the young ones in there and the older ones out Okay, so that wraps up my discussion of breeding mice. Hopefully this video gave you some insight as far as some of the challenges I face breeding mice and the differences between breeding mice and breeding rats. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.